this is edited for TV. Ed Bauman, I'm going to show you my fader group control method. Um, in record, you've got the standard way that people have been doing fader groups until they add it to the program. The standard way that people have been doing fader groups is via the 14-2 mixer. So I'm just going to show you a song that I have here, um, and it's going to pick some random elements here to make a fader group out of. So let's listen to this song really quick. It starts off with a drum intro and... So let's say we want to put these first five tracks together into one fader group so that we can bring them up and down at the same time. Now, without fader groups and record, if you wanted to bring these five up or down, let's say we got drums, Paul, which is the bass, piano, do 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 do, whatever that is, electric guitar. So these five. If you look over here at the um, mixer, here are those five tracks: drums, Paul, piano. Do, 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 do. And then what was the other one called? Uh, electric guitar. Let's bring this over here so they're together. Just so we can see them visually together. So one, two, three, four, five. We got five tracks here. Those are the same as these five here. So traditionally, the 14-2 mixer method, what you do is you go over into your mixer. And here you've got, let's see, there's the drums. There's Paul, which is the bass. We've got piano the do do da track and then let's see the electric guitar I believe is over here so this is a good example to show you how confusing this 14-2 method can be so what you want to do in this rack is to create a 14-2 mixer so I'm going to right click 14-2 mix so there it is and I want to create a um, channel strip for this mixer as well so right click create a mix channel <clears throat> so I'm going to route, flip the rack around, and I'm going to route, oh, it already got one, never mind, delete that mix channel, that's right, I'm thinking of something else here. So now we've got the 14-2 mixer uh, coming out of the mixer and going into its own input, and this let's call this uh, fader group, oops, me and my bad typing. So if you go and look at the... Um, um, the mixer over here, you will now have a group or a channel called fader group. So let's put this way over here on the left just to keep everything together. This fader group is going to house one, two, three, four, five, these five tracks. So let's get back to the rack. And what we do is we take the drums and we look for the mix channel for the drums and that's this right here flip the rack around and we're going to take direct out left and right and we're going to wire it up to this 14-2 mixer so now directly out of the drums coming into here and we also want to take direct out of Paul left and right direct out of the do do da thing which is here oh piano also we'll do piano and then do do da direct out and we want the electric guitar direct out so now all five of those instruments are coming into this 14-2 mixer now so now if we go back and rewind the song play it sounds the same right but now take a look at the mixer and see what's going on We're still seeing levels on everything, but let's take a look at the rack and look at this mixer. We're showing activity on these first five channels, right? So that audio from those five tracks, those four five instruments, is coming into this mixer, being mixed together, left and right, summed output, going into its own mix channel, the fader group channel, and then we go over to the mixer, and we could bring all those up and down together with one fader. Right? So now here's the problem. You can still hear that one of those tracks is feeding effects. Right? And so that's not good. So how do you fade the effects with it? Well, 
there's a number of ways to do it, but suffice it to say, it ain't going to be easy. And so you're going to run into problems with that if you're using effects here. And that's where that's coming from. The piano is feeding this uh, reverb on channel or on auxiliary send one. We've got reverb. So the more things you have feeding effects here, the more problems you're going to run into. If we sent some drums there, you would hear the drums in the uh, reverb as well. And so if you play the song and if the drums are going through there and you fade this group. So our drums are there. Right, so that's not good, right? You don't want that. You want your effects to fade with this master fader group. So this is the standard 14-2 method. So there is another way to do it that I came up with. So let's get rid of this fader group thing. Delete. Delete all in group. So it's gone. Flip the rack around. Everything's back to normal. All the direct outs have disappeared going to that mixer. So the song should be back to normal now. Let's just verify this and make sure everything's back to normal. All right, so it's back to normal. So now here's this other method that I came up with. I have over here on my other screen, whoa, I've got this thing called Fader Group Control. Now if you download this, I'll put the URL on the screen here. There's the URL if you want to go and download it. Um, the fader group control comes with two mix channels here. Fader group control is this primary thing. This is the magical thing. This one kilohertz test tone, that was just something that I put into the file so I can do some tests. That's not part of the actual usage. It's just to test things with. If you want, click on it. Get rid of it. You don't need it. So fader group control. All you really need to know about this, I mean, if you want to open it up, take a look at what's going on inside. There's this Thor unit called Luke 1994. That's where all the magic happens. And then there's just tons of spider CVs here. Flip it around, you can see there's lots of cables going from here to there. Don't let that freak you out. You don't need to know what's going on here if you don't want to. Don't worry about it. You don't need to be a rocket science uh, rocket scientist to figure this out. Uh, well, maybe you do, but you don't need to know that, okay? So don't worry about it. There's some wires going here and there. Don't worry about it. Um, what you want to do is simply, let's close this up, show programmer. We're going to copy devices and tracks. So I've copied this fader group control mix channel, right? So I go to my other song here, and I'm going to go to the rack, and I'm just going to paste devices and tracks. So now I've got this fader group control mix strip in my song. If I go over to the mixer, I can see that it's here, fader group control. And you can see it's already showing a level. I don't need to explain that. If you want, you can read the documentation that comes with this and figure out what that's actually showing. It's basically a control voltage that's going to be controlling the other tracks. So let's just put this over here and get it over here with these five that we're going to group together. So people have complained about this saying it's too confusing. It's not confusing. You just need to take your time and just hook it up. So, so far, what have I done? All I've done is copy it from the file that I provide for you online and paste it into my document. That's not confusing yet, right? So that's all you need to do, copy and paste this in. So now we're going to do show insert effects. So now we're looking at the contents of that fader group control. And here's the main thing, these spider CVs. This is where everything happens. Flip the rack around, you notice there is one CV cable coming out of this Thor CV1, and it goes into this first spider CV. From here, it branches off to the other ones. <coughs> so all you need to worry about, or if you really want to know, all these spider CVs are doing is taking this one signal and branching it out to tons of other ones. This left-hand side is called CV splitters. And these other ones simply send that CV signal to whatever device you want to control. So right here on split A, you've got one, two, three outputs. Split B, you've got one, two, three outputs. So this top one, as it says here, it says 
to 01 through 06. So this top Spider CV can control six devices. This next one can control seven to 12. So you got six more, six more, six more, six more, six more, all the way down to 48. So I've provided 48 Spider CVs for you to, or 48 sends um, via these, what is it, one, two, three, four, eight Spider CVs. So you can control up to 48 tracks with one of these channel strip things, fader group control. So this is all you have to do. This is where all the magic happens. Remember we got the back of this uh, these drums here, and before we took the direct outs here and routed that to that 14-2 mixer, okay, we don't need to do that. That's not where this happens. All you need to do is take one of these spider CV outputs. Here's the first one. Take control voltage cable and go up to the drums. And on the back of the mix channel, the mix, uh, the, the rack device for the, the drums, you'll see this CV control level CV in. Plug it in right there. That's it. No 14 2 mix or no nothing. Just level CV in. We want to control this Paul, the bass, control voltage in from there. Come down to the Spider CV. We'll take this second out, but it doesn't matter which one. You could take this one. You could take that one. They're all the same. They're identical. Another control voltage cable going up to the piano level CV in. This duty da thing level control voltage input. It's going to get a signal from this one here. And the last one, I believe, was the electric guitar, which was up here. Electric guitar, CV control, level, control voltage in. So there, we got five devices being controlled by the fader group. So all it is is a, it's a control voltage signal that is attenuated or controlled up or down via the fader. So as opposed to the other method where the fader was actually... Um, raising and lowering audio. This method, it's raising and lowering the control voltage signal that's going to all those devices. So you're not doing anything with audio here. All this is doing is controlling those rack devices. So the audio is still coming through these guys. So let's play. If I lower this fader now, You'll notice that the volume levels came down too. The the LEDs. So as opposed to the other method, you're actually seeing what your LEDs are doing. Bring it back up. And if you notice one other thing, let's send these drums to let's send some uh, drums to the reverb. All right, let's fade this one here. the effects fade as well. Okay, so there's an advantage. So two advantages over the other method. You're gonna see your LEDs fade, and you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna notice that the reverb, the effects fade with it as well. So, um, I'm not quite sure why people find that confusing. I mean, there's not too much to it. You've got a, a rack device, and once you've hooked it all up, you can close this up. And you're just going to have a bunch of CV cables coming out going to the devices you want. Um, there is a bit of, to be honest, there's a bit of a, a funky curve going on with this fader group. But for the most part, I mean, it's going to be controlling all your devices as a group. So it keeps all the balances relative to each other. So there's nothing being mismatched. It, it works. I've got quite a few people that say it solved a lot of problems for them. Way better than the 14-2 method. Effects fade with it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so that's about it. That's all it, you need to know how it works. Um, again, read the documentation if anything seems confusing. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. My uh, email address is going to appear here on the screen. And that's it. Fader Group Control in Record.